for Transcultural Exchange, and I took it on because I wanted the excitement of being in the moment, of being able to perform and, and have everything kind of coalesce and get out of my own little box where I'm in my studio by myself. And along came this opportunity, and I thought this would also um, move my artwork out into a larger, larger um, world. And so I thought the idea of transcultural, maybe I go to Europe or something of that nature. Well, that didn't happen, but I am still traveling in my own artwork. And it was a collaboration with Mario Rechtern, a saxophonist from Austria, and New Language Collaborative last May, May 8th, 2008. And this is the performance. And Mario, because we're doing this exchange, made it very clear that when the music stops, Linda stops painting. Mm. And so a whole painting, four feet by six feet, was accomplished in a matter of a little over an hour. And I felt like there was telepathy between people in the group with Sid, who was playing the drums from New Language Collaborative. And for Mario, he would be thinking, oh, I need some sunshine, and then I'd be painting yellow. or oh, I need some sky, I need some ceiling, I need some space. And the, the um, Brookline Chai Chi Center had maybe 25, 30 foot ceilings, so needing space, okay. Uh, so the blue, I was painting blue. And so that was happening and I didn't find out until afterwards. I didn't say I heard Mario in my own mind do these things. It was a collaboration and I thought this is really exciting. And I look forward to when he comes back in the fall. But that did not happen. The New Language Collaborative and Eric have been the rest of the project with me. To, to complete the uh, performances that I had hoped to do with the New Language Collaborative and also with the Eric Zinman Ensemble, this is the painting done with the same idea, painting while the music is going, and feeling the audience, feeling the participation, having people come up and say, I saw this, and then you moved here, and you did this. It was an exciting collaboration, not only with the musicians, but with the audience. And the, it, this was a wonderful part of, of doing this. Okay, this is the April 4th piece of the performance, and they're the same size canvases, three by six, and I did it during the music, and different music, different dynamics, different audience, and I feel like there's more charge, there was more stress and more um, vitality in this painting than the former two. And that has to do with everything that was happening at the moment. And that's what makes this kind of painting exciting for me. And having to finish a painting, it has to be a painting, not just marks on a canvas, in that period of time makes it exciting also. Eric and, and Mario's CD called Zorn and this is number one, and while I was listening to only to the music with Eric there, and uh, the CD was already in process, they hadn't edited it or come up with titles or anything, I found that there was ghosts coming out, like the ghost dance from the Native Americans, and I feel very close to that. And I thought, well, this is interesting. This is my form of Zorn, Holy Fury. I've always felt how how unjust we've traded, treated the Native Americans. And having felt the ghost dance, I was looking for, in, and, and felt it through the, the uh, emergence of white on the other painting, I started out looking for the space for the white. And so I feel like this one I call the ancestor speak. And it has the message of the ancestors. Uh, people have seen, you know, flowers and organs and people and all kinds of projections. The more you look at it, the more of it comes out. It has to do with brain plasticity and your brain re reorganizes itself for a different kind of aesthetic. Again, this was only done during the playing of the CD. 
this is the third Zorn, and this one seemed to come out and, and have some of the dark energy of, of the, that I heard in the music, and also I felt it was like the struggle to get from very deep levels underneath cultures, underneath many things, the breath, and Mario shapes his reeds for his um, saxophone so he gets particular sounds out of it, and I felt I was really working with that element, so I call this one um, breath within, deep breath within. And this one was done in between, it wasn't done for the format of a CD, the other ones were squares so they could be translated into a CD cover. And this was just listening to the music and allowing the intervals and, and the sounds to take, take root in me. Really interesting, I was going to do another Zorn, this is I call him Bread Magic Woman, and it was just Eric and I playing off each other. Eric played me, and I played Eric. So it was very personal, and I feel like uh, Eric loves food. <laughs> and he said, oh, I taste all these tropical flavors over here. And other people look at it, and they see animals, and they see birds, and, and the more they look at it, more things come out. And it, it has an, a, a flavor of, of um, the multitude of things that come out in artistic expression, those things that we intend and those things that are in our subconscious painting, but it comes out more in, in terms, we can record this anyway, it comes out more in terms of, of uh, my sense of what to do next. It isn't like I can feel particular people in the audience, but I feel the ambience. And, and when I'm looking at my canvas, I'll say, what does it need? And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm taking it from the sound and I'm taking it... Um, I, I was aware how much more the audience had an effect as well as the musicians after I did it. Mm -hmm. And as some people sent me a poem and some people said, well, I experienced this and I watched this happen and stuff. So there, here is from the May, to, uh, May 08 um, performance at the Brookline Tai Chi and the paintings underneath it were really basically the warm-up paintings for the last uh, of the uh, performance pieces for April 4th. Mm -hmm. And they're small little canvases, but um, I just like to get a pulse of how I feel separate from music. I did them at home. I mixed my paint first. I brought the paint, the, I played with the paint I mixed to see how I felt about the colors. Okay. And, I brought, and then um, I decided I liked these better than the other things that I had here, so I brought them in. So they were and, actually done at home before the event? Yeah, but they were part of the event because they were my mixing of my colors. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. And these other little ones were um, in the cellar, these, uh, there were four, and I, took, I gave one to Mario. So um, Eric went to Europe and he took one with him for Mario. So these three were, were done with Lawrence Cook. And, and Eric, who are producing another piece um, that they recorded, and I listened to it, and I did some small paintings. It's interesting that you say you got responses from people, because uh, personally, being in the audience, I found that I was drawn to look at the painting mm -hmm. more than the musicians. And it seemed to come, the music was coming into another part of my, my brain, because I was having this visual impact of watching the painting being created. So it was a really nice kind of way to hear music, but see this kind of... Well, I really felt you were part of the, the orchestra or the ensemble. That was her way of saying it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Although you never really turn around and look at the audience. I did a couple of times. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, when